good morning student so the topic for today is emf equation of a dc machine so so far we have learned how a dc machine is constructed and how emf is generated to the fleming's laws and everything so you know about this thing so now we will derive an expression for the emf equation of the dc machine so i have just brought some handwritten notes for you so uh, so what so you the first thing you should understand is if it's a generator or a motor the expression for emf is same for both the generator as well as the motor but the concept is just different for in case of a generator is a generated emf and for the motor the emf that is happening is back emf so today's topic will be mainly based on the emf for both uh, generator and motor and what is this back emf phenomena that's happening in a motor these are the topics that you will, we will be handling today so you know in a generator there is an armature so as the armature rotates a voltage is generated in its coils so an armature will be there it will be between the north pole and south pole so when that uh, rotate that will be between the field coils when it rotates an emf is induced that's an armature emf or generated emf is there so that emf we denote by eg e suffix g and in a motor it will be a back emf or a counter emf and we denote that by eb okay so the expression for both emf is same for both generator and the motor and now now we are going to to derive the emf equation of a dc machine so let us consider p is the number of poles of the machine you know just keep uh, bring the diagram of uh, a dc machine to your mind and then uh, and you will understand what, why we are considering these things so p will be the number of poles and phi this is phi which is flux per pole in weber the unit of flux is weber okay flux per pole because there will be a flux happening between the magnetic field will be there between north pole and south pole so flux for each pole is phi and z is the total number of armature conductors okay and n is the speed of the armature in rpm how the armature is rotating and a is the number of parallel paths in the armature conductor so these these uh, five uh, uh, factors will make uh, will derive you the equation for the emf so so and a is the number of parallel paths okay now you just think about it there will uh, in one revolution of the armature so armature is taking armature is taking one revolution the flux cut by by one conductor will be p into phi you know flux per pole is phi so in one uh, rota uh, one rotation the flux cut by one conductor will be p into phi weber okay flux per pole will be for flux by pole into pole so the total flux we will get at p into phi and that time taken to complete that one revolution will be 60 by n second small t okay so therefore the average induced emf in one revolution will be p phi by t you know flux emf generated will be the total flux by the time so average emf generated will be the total flux by the time taken for that one revolution so in one revolution we have a flux which is equal to p into phi weber and the time taken is 60 by 1 second because that is the frequency and the average induced emf in one revolution will be that flux by the total time so it will be weber per second so emf will is in weber per second okay so we we know uh, so we know that time that small t the small t here is n by 60 okay small t here is n by 60 so that t we substitute here and we get e is equal that is average induced emf is equal to p phi by n uh, 60 by n that is n p phi by 60 so we have reached here the number of conductors connected in series in each parallel path is z by a because you know z what is z z is the total number of armature conductors and a is the number of parallel path in the armature conductor so when we divide both so when we divide both we get the number of conductors connected in series in each parallel path will be z by a okay then the average induced emf across each parallel path 
okay e now we are conducting across each parallel path so we need to multiply it with z by a so e is equal to p phi n by 60 into z by a okay so p phi so roughly we will say em of introduced by this equation is p phi n z by 60a simple problems and all in any competitive exam even if you are mechanical this equation you will get this questions uh in simple this is the basic level exam this machine means this is the basic level exam. and then the windings we can connect it in two ways one is the lap winding and one is the wave winding so just the, uh, solving problems i'm saying La, uh, lap uh, lap winding means a is equal to p what is a a is the number of parallel paths in the armature winding and lap winding means a is equal to number of poles then emf induced in case of lap winding will be pi z done by 60 because a is equal to p they will get cancelled and in case of a wave winding e wave is equal to p phi z by 120 because a is 2 means 16 into 120 these are the two equations because whenever there is whenever they uh, A numerical comes in your exam or in any competitive exam or your university exam. They will mention that DC machine is connected and its windings are connected in lap. Then lap means and you should come to your mind that the, you know the formula and then that formula A is equal to number of poles. They will be giving you the number of poles. So, so the final equation we get is E is equal to P phi n is that by 60 A and n by 60 you know it is the revolution per second 1 minute is 60 second that's revolution per second so e is e is proportional to flux into that revolution per second because number of poles z a p everything they are constant they will not change for a particular machine these things will not change only the flux flux can change that that the number of flux they are cutting the how much how much flux it is cutting it can change and the speed which it, it is rotating that can also change okay so we can write e is e is proportional to flux into n by 60 that is the revolution per second okay and here actually it is rotating in one angle so small n can be represented by angular velocity also which is actually 2 pi n by 60 which is angular velocity in radian per second remember in our in our previous classes i told there will be two phenomenons there one will be the torque and other will be the angular velocity in case of a, a motor it is input and in case of generator no in case of motor means uh, mechanical yeah correct yes. so induced emf is directly proportional to the speed and flux per pole so it's a basic uh, in your viva or anything because you have dc machines lab no So in your viva in your because DC, or what? Which all factors will affect the EMF of a DC machine? So it will be mainly the flux, flux per pole, and the speed. And that it, this is also another uh, important thing you should keep in mind: the polarity of the induced EMF. How we can change the polarity of the induced EMF? That is how. Okay. So polarity of the induced EMF. So how you you will determine the polarity of the induced EMF? That I have already taught you. The Fleming's rule, Fleming's light hand rule, and the Fleming's left hand rule. So here, the polarity of the induced EMF it depends upon the direction of the magnetic field as well as the direction of the rotation. So if you are changing any of the two, if you are changing the magnetic direction of the magnetic field, that is your north pole and south pole, if it is changed, or if you are changing the direction of the rotation, then <clears throat> the polarity of the induced emf can be reversed because any one of them should be reversed if both are reversed means uh, same effect you will get right both uh, from the because mutually perpendicular direction you have keep the angle you will find the angle find the rotation because uh, if both are changing means uh, no effect same same uh, polarity it will be this is a good question that can be asked in any exam when it comes to dc machine okay so induced emf is the same if they are working as a generator or the motor so in case of a generator it is eg p phi n is sub by 60 a and in case of eb p phi because why we because why it is eb because it is the back emf so now we will understand what is back emf it, it can be a question 
explain the working of a DC machine, a DC motor, and uh, derive derive for on and explain what is back EMF. Any any way they can ask you. It's a simple, uh, very basic question that can be asked from a DC machine. Because it is called back EMF because it always opposes the supply voltage. It always opposes the supply voltage. So this actually shows a uh, a DC motor which is actually connected in shunt shunt connected mean because types of connection i will be taking you in the next class now just understand that a dc machine you know a dc machine you know it has an armature it has a field so if this armature and the field uh, they are connected in parallel then we say it's a uh, shunt uh, shunt connector a uh, dc motor so this is the case of a shunt connector dc motor armature system is ra and the current uh, passing through the shunt that is parallel path is ISH. Okay. So here the just uh, just for your understanding, because these things you should write. The field windings are connected across or in parallel with the armature conductor and have full voltage of the generator. Because you know, in a parallel connection, if it is a parallel connection, if there is no element in between, because the volt, you know, in a parallel connection, the voltage is same. So the voltage across the armature and the shunt will everything is same. It's all, everywhere it's V. Now you, you just understand how this back EMF is produced and what is the use. If the back EMF is good for us or it's a bad, it's a bad phenomenon. What? Because you know it's it is it is op opposing the supply voltage means you should you will you might think it is not a, it's not a useful thing. But back EMF is a phenomenon which actually makes a DC motor work. Without back EMF, the DC motor cannot work. Okay. So when a DC voltage is applied across the motor terminals, the field magnets are excited, you know, and the armature conductors are supplied with the current from the working of a DC motor. You have, you know, how it is. So this supply is given across the armature, the field are excited, and the current flows. So the driving torque acts on the armature, which begins to rotate. So when a current flows through the armature. So there is a magnetic field and there is a current flowing. So according to Fleming's right hand rule, there, there will be the, the thumb will show a motion. There will be a thumb motion. So a driving torque acts on the armature, which begins to rotate. As the armature rotate, back EMF is induced, which opposes the applied voice. So a magnetic field is there and um, a magnetic field is there and the armature is rotating in the magnetic field. So there is one law called Lenz's law. So according to Lenz's law, there will be an EMF. So when a conductor rotates in a, a, a flux uh, in the magnetic field, an EMF will be induced in that, and that EMF will oppose the applied voltage. According to Lenz's law, Lenz's law says that the induced EMF will oppose the cause of that. Opposing the cause of the induced EMF. Here, the induced EMF is due to the voltage supplied to the, uh, voltage given to the armature, right? So that in back, so that EMF, which is actually a back EMF, because it opposes the applied voltage. That's for, according to Lenz's law. We can say that. Okay. So the applied voltage is opposite. So the applied voltage, they will be against each other. So the net voltage will be V minus EB. So what actually is the mechanical output we get? Because we know in a motor, input is electrical and output is mechanical. So there should be some work done to overcome that, uh, that opposition, no? So the electrical work done in overcoming and causing the current to flow against EB is converted into mechanical energy. So now you think whether um, back EMF is useful or not. So the electrical is actually a regulating phenomenon. It actually regulates. So the electrical work done in overcoming and causing the current to flow against EB is converted into mechanical energy, mechanical energy developed in the armature. So the net voltage is V minus EB. So if RA is the armature circuit resistance. So there's an armature which I show you. So RA is the resistance means 
I A it can be V minus E B by R B. The current through the armature. You know, when a volt when a DC supply is connected to the armature coil, a voltage will be there, and that voltage results in a back EMF. So the current will be the current through the armature will be that voltage difference. Divided by resistance, you know, according to Ohm's law, I is equal to V by R, but that V will be V minus E B because there is a back EMF. So I A is equal to V minus E B by R A. Now I shall discuss with you some points regarding the significance of back EMF. So the presence of back EMF makes the DC motor a self-regulating machine. How it is self-regulating? Just think about it. From the equation, you can you can say, we know I A is equal to V minus E B by R A. So according to the value of the back EMF, so how much back back EMF you are getting, so that will determine the armature conductor. So the what is the current flowing through the armature, right? So consider two cases: load and no load condition. So uh, load means the, the output. The uh, the, the output of the motor there will be some load connected Maybe some uh, water to draw some water from the well any load will be there and no load means they kept operate there is nothing connected okay so the first we will say the we will see the no load condition so when the motor is running on no load a small torque is required to overcome the friction and windage loss only because there is there is there is no so we don't need much mechanical energy in the output because there is nothing to be drawn, nothing to be done. We just need the energy to overcome the friction and the windage losses. Therefore, the armature current is small and the back EMF is nearly equal to the applied voltage because there is no need of work. You just see the above derivation, the above sentence. The electrical work done in overcoming and causing the current to flow against AB. EB, sorry, EB is converted into mechanical energy. So there is no work needed to be done in case of a no load. Very minimal work to overcome the friction and windage loss only. So in that case, the supplied voltage or the applied voltage V will be almost equal to the back EM of EB. That's a no load condition. In a loaded condition, here is the game actually. In a loaded condition, when the motor is loaded, so when we connect any any, any uh, load to the output, the armature the armature will be rotating. So when we when you connect something to the output, then that then the armature need to carry that out. So the speed of the armature slows down. So the speed of the armature conductor moving through the field is reduced, and hence the back EMF. You see, the speed also reduced means the back EMF is also reduced. All these can be understood from the equation. Oh, just because the conductor was rotating very fast, now the, now the speed of the conductor gets reduced. The speed of the conductor get reduced means the back EMF also get reduced. Because the, that was, because the EMF was there because of because it was cutting the magnetic field. So the frequency which it is cutting the magnetic field reduces means the back EMF also get reduced. So when the back EMF is decreased, it allows a larger current to flow through the armature and that results in the increased driving power. So IA is equal to V minus EB by RA. So the numerator term back EMF is reduced. <coughs> okay, so it allows larger current to flow through the armature. So V minus EB will increase and that results in increased driving torque. So the dive, driving torque increases as the motor slows down. The motor will stop slowing down when the armature current is just sufficient to produce the increased torque required by the load. Just think, it is regulating actually. So if, and if the load on the motor is decreased, the driving torque is momentarily in excess of the load because there was some particular load and uh, the armature reached a <coughs> There was some particular load and armature current reaches reached a particular value where it is providing the adequate torque to drive that load. So if the load is reduced means then the torque will be more. In that case, what we will do? The armature speed will increase. 
when the load become less the speed will increase in that case the back emf also increase and that causes the ia to decrease how from ia from the equation you will understand it and the concept also i have taught you now so we will conclude like back emf in a dc generator regulates the flow of the armature current that is it automatically changes the armature current to meet the load requirements it is regulating okay that's actually a very good uh, concept you understand when you're studying a dc machine so these are the topics uh, that i have uh, that I have, you have for today's classes so i will just summarize for you what we have learned today and what we are done so far so today we understood how we are back emf uh, how emf is produced, emf equation of generator and motor and what is back emf and its significance back emf and its significance very important okay okay so and numerical problems i shall teach you in the next class thank you have a nice day